it is Monday the 14th and I'm usually off today um, you know I'm still working uh, I think this is the first vlog that the cruises have posted besides the uh, the New Year's Eve vlog but unfortunately we have had probably the worst last two weeks of our lives cruise has kind of had a rough start to the new year um uh, we lost erica's grandpa uh, which is who, who i call grandpa cruise the main man of the cruise family january 4th was a friday probably around noon is when i got the call um, my dad let me know that my, uh, my grandpa was in the emergency room and that he had a heart attack. Grandpa's 81. He's been on the vlog before. He's the one that built the cabin that we always go to. Um, and it was a bit of a shock. <clears throat> he said that he was stable and that but he was critical and I didn't need to go if I didn't want to, he would let me know. And I was like, of course I'm going, it's my grandpa, you know? So I went and uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't good at all. Um, come to find out he didn't have a heart attack. He actually went into cardiac arrest, which is different. It's not a, <clears throat> a heart attack is usually happens when there's like a blockage of some sort. Um, this is when your heart just stops. So there's some kind of electrical problem to the heart. Uh, he was with my grandma. They had been married 60 years. Uh, she made him breakfast. He was taking his plate to the sink and he just collapsed. <clears throat> she wasn't sure what was going on. She tried to call his name and he didn't respond. <clears throat> And so she went over there and she tried to roll him over, but he was too heavy for her. So she pulled him by his jacket and ended up getting, o getting him over and saw that he is spitting up and stuff, you know, um, and that he was in trouble. So he, she did CPR on him, called 911, did CPR for about five to eight minutes before the ambulance got there. And, uh, you know, they took him to the hospital from there, but... And it's probably been the worst, the worst time of our lives and of Erica's life. Erica is, has probably the best relationship with her grandpa. Um, yeah, uh, that happened. And they were able to uh, get his heart going again and bring him back. Um, he was in the ICU for about five days. And then following Tuesday, which was the 8th of January, uh, he passed away. And <clears throat> it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to deal with just because It's been the first family member that I have lost, like, ever. I mean, I can't say that. The first one that has really impacted me to my immediate family. He was what you call a real grandpa, you know? Um, I personally, I had my grandparents some, but I didn't grow up with them like that. So I don't have that granddaughter grandfather bond like she had um it's a very very rough time right now someone that I grew up with that I saw all the time my Nino died when I was when he was 30 and I was really young and <clears throat> I was about five when he died but I remember it but I was so young that it didn't entirely impact me. So this is like the first 
the first loss that I've experienced. And it was a difficult one because we actually had to remove him from the machines that were keeping him alive. The reason why we had to take him off the machines was because he had no brain activity. For the amount of time that he went without oxygen, it wasn't good. He wouldn't have wanted to live that way, no way. He would want my grandma to see him like that every day. So we made what we thought was the right decision based on what we know what he wanted. <clears throat> so today I'm off because we're going down to San Jose to my family's house and be with them because tomorrow, Tuesday the 12th is the funeral. And it's gonna be difficult this whole, since the 4th has been difficult. Um, and you know, we're just trying to get through it. So we haven't really been <clears throat> Recording too much or doing too much a lot of the time has been spent with family and obviously that's kind of like <clears throat> Private stuff so but we did want to share with the lesbian fam uh, Why You haven't seen any vlogs from us. <clears throat> We're good. <laughs> Dina and I are still good Baby Santana's good. I'm gonna turn this off um, No, everything's good with us besides that, you know, which is huge to us, my grandpa was, he meant a lot to me, he means a lot to me, and uh, I'm really sad that <clears throat> he won't get to meet baby Santana, but I know that they've already met, and that he's just going to be watching over her for the rest of her life, so knowing that has been... made it easier for me to kind of deal with things so yeah man anybody that's lost someone jeez it's really close to them this is the first time I've experienced it I don't want to experience it again for the forever but I know I will have to so it's just tough man it's just one of those things but we are gonna share a little bit of our day with you guys um and in the meantime i'm getting ready for santana to come and i have to train somebody for um to cover for me during my leave um at the oral surgery office so i'm on my way there we're gonna get things ready and then we have a doctor's appointment and um yeah just gotta keep on pushing I guess so that's what's going on with us right now uh, Dina is at work right now training her replacement while she's on um, maternity leave so she's there at the office she's gonna come back around 12 I believe and then we have a doctor's appointment for baby Santana at uh, 1 o'clock uh, do the dishes, get some stuff done around the house. Y'all don't know, I do dishes for a living. Uh, <laughs> Dina don't do dishes at all. Matter of fact, she don't do shit. She don't do nothing. She just feel like, because she's pregnant, like, uh -huh, you're pregnant, you ain't handicapped, you know what I'm saying? So. She's not dirty, she's just messy. Meaning, she takes something out of, like, the refrigerator to use it and she doesn't put it back we got a small ass kitchen like from here to here I basically it's arm's length for me and I'm little like put that shit back where you got it you know what I'm saying like it's it's right there just put it back nah. Then I'm like, and she's one of those people that she doesn't like to be told what to do. So, I tell her, you gonna put that back? And she's like, don't tell me what to do. You put it back. You're right there then. Oh, boom. Gets on my damn nerves. I'm telling you, this week we've kind of, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for you to come, baby Santana. She's so hormonal. 
and me going through what I'm going through right now, we have just been like, I've been this close to walking out of the house a couple times, but I'm mean, good. You know what I mean? Like, we talk about it. We know we're not vibing. You know, we can both feel it. And, uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes it happens, you know, and we're good now. Things are straight between us. We talked about it. We're back in our loving, loving ways. But, yeah, that girl drives me nuts sometimes. She really, really does. So. All right, it's time to go to our doctor's appointment. You hurry up and finish that. My dry ass meal you got me with just lettuce. Like I got her a healthy ass. No sour cream. Um, I mean, bowl. because if yeah. I suffer, you suffer. So that's cold. That's how we gotta be. All right, getting ready to go to the doctor's appointment. We're gonna check on the baby's heartbeat and stuff. Mmm. Let's go. Are you ready for her to be here? <clears throat> yeah. You don't even look pregnant from behind. You look normal. Yeah. And then you get to the front. Ooh, shorty. <laughs> How do you feel about seeing the baby? I see. That's the baby's butt. That's the baby's spine. Those are her arms and her legs. Don't ask me what I'm looking at. I just know their arms and legs. And that's her dome. <coughs> that's coming out of your vagina. She's head down. She's ready. She's ready to come out, babe. How you feel about that?